this. Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Digital Crafts Meetup. We are building Pac-Man tonight utilizing JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. Um, we are hosting the meetup live here in Atlanta Tech Village and also on Twitch. If you have any questions at all, feel free to um, you know type it in in the chat box and we'll try and answer them as quickly as possible. We have a few staff members following along. Um, if you um, you know just want to sit back and relax, watch the video or um, watch Chris program, the video will be available on YouTube tomorrow. So um, here is Chris Aquino, our lead instructor. Hello, hello, yay, everybody. Uh, if you're remote, I promise that's not recorded clapping. Those are real people here. Okay, so uh, as Liz mentioned, uh, we are in fact going to build kind of a demo version of Ms. Pac-Man. I went with Ms. Pac-Man. I'm currently teaching a cohort full of dudes. So I decided I needed more female presence uh, in this classroom. So here it is. This is what the final Ms. Pac-Man will look like. As you can see, there are no ghosts. There is no score. She can just run around and collect coins. So she cannot move past the walls. When she intersects with one of the coins, she takes it. So. Awesome, yeah. Uh, I had debated creating like a, like, yay, you won screen, but I didn't get that far. But um, we're gonna take a look at how to build this. I have supplied uh, some starter code. Now, I don't know what the best way is to get this on the Twitch channel, but hopefully some of the um, folks from Digital Crafts can help me out with this. Uh, what you should be seeing on screen right now is the GitHub page to this project. If you scroll down, now I will read that out. Uh, that's github.com slash radish mouse. That's right, like the vegetable and then the animal. Uh, slash digital crafts dash meetup dash Pac-Man. And I'm pretty sure that the digital crafts folks are going to be putting that in the Twitch chat like real soon. All right, so here's what you need to, to get started. An easy way to get here is just to go to github.com slash radish mouse. That's me with my mother-in-law's cat. That's how you know you're in the right spot. Just click over on repositories and it should be the first repository at the top of that list. Once you were there at the Digital Crafts Meetup Pac-Man repo, you can just scroll down and then this is a general guide to what it is that we'll be doing tonight. So this is a screenshot of the game, which I was just demoing in the browser. Uh, then I list some goals, some questions you should be able to answer after this tutorial, uh, and also some guidelines. Now, in the guidelines section, that's where you're gonna see links to the starter code and the final code. Those are both zip files. You can grab them both, so you can play around with the final version, and if you wanna follow along, you can grab the starter code and start typing along with me in just a moment. There's not really much setup. All you need is a browser. I'm pretty sure that you've all got a browser. And uh, one thing that I did not mention, a very good browser for development is the uh, Google Chrome browser. So meta, you can just Google for Google Chrome, and then you should get a link to download that. If you, if you don't have Google Chrome, that is totally okay. I, that's what I'll be using, just in case you're curious. But for whatever computer you're using, they should have a download link for uh, grabbing a copy of the Chrome browser. The second thing you need in order to follow along is some sort of text editor. You need to be able to type the code into something. I'm gonna be using Visual Studio Code. Uh, that's free. It's a very, very good text editor. You can use whatever you want. Some other really good slash free ones are the Atom Editor, Sublime Text, and TextMate. 
OK. And then uh, the rest of this readme lists out what we're going to be talking about, which is basically like how do, at a very basic level, how do web pages work? And we're going to talk about the three core technologies, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. That is all we're going to use in order to create Ms. Pac-Man. So no extra libraries. If you've heard of something like jQuery or Canvas or other technologies, those, are, those would be great, but those are not what we're covering tonight. Right? Just the basics. Peek under the hood of like, well, how do web pages work? OK. Are you ready? Ready to start? Cool. OK. All right. Just to confirm, this, this does indeed work. Ms. Pac-Man can collect coins, and she can't run through the walls. So we're going to start off by taking a look at the, I'm going to reset my code to the starter code. And then my screen should be completely blank. Um, I've, your starter code has the skeleton of some HTML, which you should see uh, on the stream right now. So this is the HTML document. I, I'm only using three files of code for this project. One is the HTML file. I've also got a CSS file, and I've got a JavaScript file. All right. So for those of you who've never done any HTML before, don't be alarmed. This is not something that you would memorize. Uh, your text editor will usually come equipped with some templates for like a basic HTML page. Uh, and that's exactly what this is. The two parts that are important for us is this one beginning here on line nine. Uh, that's a link to the style sheet. And that essentially determines all the, um, the sizes of things. When you see Mrs. Pac-Man, um, the picture that I'm using for Ms. Pac-Man, uh, how I'm drawing the different walls, how I'm sizing everything, that's all determined by CSS. And all of the functionality, like what Mrs. Pac-Man does when she interacts with one of the coins, that's all determined by the JavaScript. We're going to look at this in two parts. First, we're going to take a look at the HTML plus the CSS, because what we want to do first is understand, well, how do we draw a thing to the screen? How does a web page even display anything? The second half of this tutorial will involve the interaction that you see, uh, the actual gameplay, as it were. All right. So I am go actually going to split the screen here. Uh, I did that in Visual Studio Code by clicking this icon in the upper right. I'm going to grab my style sheet try to grab my style sheet and bring it over to the side. Uh, and we're going to, we're going to write some HTML and I'm going to show you the things up here on the page. Let me just drag this over just a little bit. In your starter code, you're going to notice that there's some stuff that's pre-written that might look a little bit unfamiliar. This first section is basically like so that my sizing works kind of intuitively. By default, when you use CSS to display stuff on a web page, it works a, in kind of a funny way. Um, I've got a link to an article that explains how this little trick works, but this will just make it nicer for me to add borders to things and set uh, the heights and widths in a predictable way. Moving on down, we've got the body of the web page. I'm saying here that the body should have a background color that is black. That's how I have a black web page over here in the browser right now. Uh, and finally, I've got this bit of code that says, you know what? I want to make sure that my game board is just a little bit further down from the top of the screen and that it is centered, and everything inside of it is centered. So let's, let's do this. I'm going to drop in some HTML here, and we're going to get to know our three main game pieces. So right here, uh, I'm going to use, I'm going to write some HTML. So for those of you who don't know, HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. 
It was originally created for uh, publishing and linking scientific documents. And then all kinds of crazy stuff happened and now we have like Gmail and Google Maps and cat videos and other stuff which is of course very amazing. Your HTML is written in the form of these plain text tags. And when I say tag, I, I mean like, let's say I, when I have some text like, hello everyone, welcome, right? I could write that, but I want to say, well, one of these things is say, um, some sort of a heading. Now, there's a set of tags that you can use to denote that, and that's exactly what I mean. You are marking up your content, your text, your images, that sort of thing. You are just attaching little bits of like, oh, this is where that content starts, and this is where it ends, and so you're gonna, the browser will treat it a certain way. And I might do this as a paragraph, the welcome part. I'm gonna, for just a moment, turn off my uh, black background. Oops. So I'm just going to use a keyboard shortcut in Visual Studio Code that will comment this out. So comments are useful when you write code. They're like little notes for yourself, but also while you're developing, maybe you want to turn off some code. You want to disable it. And so in Visual Studio Code, I just press Command Slash, and it just comments out that bit of code. So I'm going to save that, and I'm also going to save this change to my HTML file. I will return to the browser. And now we see that here's the text, hello everyone, followed by welcome. And if you look closely, the text is different. Hello everyone is much larger than the text below it, which says welcome. I achieve that in the code by using different HTML tags. So pretty, um, after you write it, it looks a little bit less strange. And this was the original intention. You're going to just have plain text and you, you just sort of mark it up so that you designate the purpose of each bit of text. So we're going to go well beyond that. We're not using this as a way to mark up a document. We're going to build a video game. And so for that, we're not going to use headings. We're not going to use paragraphs. We're not even going to use links. We're going to use an extremely generic tag called a div. All right, a div. Uh, it has no particular meaning. It doesn't mean like, oh, when you click this, go to another page. It doesn't mean, oh, when they fill this out, they're going to order something from a store. It just means generic delimiter. So I'm going to drop one of those in there. I'm going to put my background color back to black. I don't have any content inside of my div, so when I go back to the browser, and I reload, it's once again just a black screen. So instead, what I'll do is I'm going to say, you know what, I want to attach some sort of visual information to this particular div. Here's a little secret. Everything that you that is drawn to a web page is in the shape of a rectangle. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna switch over to the previous version of a well, the final version, and I'm going to show you that you can click on one of these things. So I'm just going to control, I'm going to right click on Ms. Pac-Man, and I see a little menu. You may not see it in the stream, but if you're following along, you'll know that it's there, where I can inspect that element. So I'm inspecting Ms. Pac-Man. There she is. She is a rectangle, even though to you and me, she's kind of circular with a bow on her head. And I have updated Ms. Pac-Man. She feels no need to wear lipstick. I also didn't know how to draw it on her. Anyway, <clears throat> so as I, I, I mouse around, what is highlighted on the page is the rectangle corresponding to each of these tags in the final version. You'll notice that I'm kind of annotating each one with some sort of, with one or more class names. Those class names signal to the browser hey, um, there's some styling information associated with this rectangle. Would you look in the CSS file and see how this should be painted? So specifically, tile, Pac-Man, left, those are three class names. 
that I will define, or we will define in the CSS file that are going to do a few things. So I'm just going to scroll down here in the dev tools built into the browser. And this first class specifies that, all right, for something that is a tile, that has the tile class, I should say, uh, it should be 50 pixels by 50 pixels. That's the height and that's the width. There's this other bit of styling information saying inline block, all right? Uh, that's, that tells the browser, all right, so I want you to allow uh, the developer to control the height and the width. That's what the block part of that means. But uh, I want this to sit side by side with other inline block um, rectangles. So that's how I got the effect of like a game board with multiple tiles. And finally, there was some really weird white space that I needed to get rid of, so I added the vertical align top. Now if we scroll down a little, uh, ooh, there it is. Here we go. Uh, so for, uh, for Ms. Pac-Man, I'm going to set her in this direction. We're going to re-inspect her. Uh, what I did was go up to the upper left of the dev tools. I clicked the little selection tool, and I'm going to click on her again. And you can see that for the pack class, I have the following style. All I'm doing is pulling in a background image for the rectangle. Yes, I've got the tile class and the Pac-Man class providing styles for this one rectangle on the screen. So a brief aside, um, if you've never done CSS, you might uh, not know that that particular technology is that's an acronym, like many things in uh, uh, the programming world. It stands for Cascading Style Sheets. You probably get the idea of the style part. That's how, like, that's how I'm providing the visual information for the browser. The sheet part, I don't really know what that part is, other than it's like a page of code. But the cascading part, that's where this comes in, where I'm able to apply multiple sets of styles to the same rectangle, and the browser just kind of figures it out. It says, OK, so. You're a tile, so this is your height and your width, and this is what I should do with your spacing and how you should sit snugly next to another tile. But it is also applying the background image from the Pac-Man class. Also note that in CSS, when I want to refer to something's class name, I just put a dot in front of it. I prefix it with a period. All right, so. One more thing, I'm going to turn Ms. Pac-Man to the left. I need to re-inspect her. And now I'm applying the styles from three different classes, Tile, Pac-Man, and Left. Notice that with Pac-Man, we're not using the original Ms. Pac-Man picture. There's a very, very subtle strike through on background image. The one that is taking effect is the, is the Left class, which is a a picture of Ms. Pac-Man facing to the left. And so this is, uh, we'll look at how this plays out in the CSS file, why it is that the left class takes effect while the regular Pac-Man class is not, is no longer taking effect. So let's do this. Let's start with drawing uh, a single tile to the screen. I'm going to switch back over to the code for those of you on the stream. And here's what I do. In my HTML, I want to essentially say the div that I, I am typing out right now needs to have some class names so it picks up some styles from the CSS file. I'm going to say that, yes, it is a tile. And because I already know how this code is going to end up, I'm going to go ahead and type this here. Uh, width 50 pixels, height 50 pixels. I want them to sit side by side, display inline block. There are, there are lots of different values you can supply for each one of these CSS properties, but for our purposes, inline block is going to get us the effect that we want. All right? So vertical align top. All right, to get rid of the, the weird white space, so now we still won't see anything because tiles, tiles don't really do much. They're going to draw a box. 
I'm going to save my code, reload the page, and impress it, right? There's nothing there, or so it seems. If I go back to my DevTools, I open up the body, there's my one sad little tile, which we can only see because we're hovering over with the DevTools and it highlights it for us, but there's nothing there, okay? It's basically black on black, and that's, we'll take care of that in a moment, but uh, this is uh, important to know. Anything that, each of these rectangles, for any of your content on any web page, it's, it's got to take up some sort of space, and the browser figures that out using some sort of, like, there is reasoning behind this. Uh, it's called the box model, and it determines how, how big, how much space on, a, on the page a particular HTML tag should occupy. All right. Now, back in the code, uh, let's, draw, let's draw a wall. You saw that I was able to draw Ms. Pac-Man by giving her a background image. All of these things are tiles, so they take up a certain amount of space. Background-image. And now I'm going to say, I know that my images, let me simplify this just a little bit. I'm now typing in the style in the CSS file, styles.css. All of my images are located in an images folder. So I need to say, all right, style sheet, in order for you to find the, uh, the background image that I want, I need you to go up one folder where you're going to find the images folder. Then inside of that, you should find the, oh, sorry. I, I got confused. We're not using an image for the wall. We're just going to put a background color on it. Blue. All right. Sorry about that. Unnecessary tangent. Let's do this. Uh, it is a tile. It is also a piece of the wall. Back in the browser, let's see what this looks like. OK, so we get a blue box. Cool. And let's take a look at the, back at the final version. It's not just a blue box. It had this nice little uh, border around it. So I'm going to add that back, back to the code. We'll give it a border um, that is two pixels. Uh, it is solid. And I'm going to go with the color cornflower blue, because why not? I'm going to save that change, return to the browser. Cool. Very cool. All right. All right, question. Yeah. Um, is Blue, actually, like, part of CSS and color. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do, um, let's meet the next character in our uh, game pieces. And this is going to be a div with class. All of my divs are going to have class tile. I'm going to make this one a coin. Returning back to the browser, as you might guess, I don't have any styles associated with coin, so oh well, it's another blank uh, box. So let's write some code for that. For this, we want it to be a yellow circle, color yellow. I save that, return to the browser. I get a yellow square? That's not at all what I wanted. Well, uh, in order to take a rectangle and make it into a circle, I'm going to round the corners, like, severely. So let's do this. Border, radius, 50%. So I typed that uh, in the styles for the coin class. And then over in the browser, I look. That's a really big circle. The coins are supposed to be a lot smaller than that. So let's make it a little bit smaller. And we'll say, uh, I'm going to transform it. I'm going to say you should be, I'm going to scale you down to about 30% of your original size. Exactly 30% of your original size. Returning now to the browser, we have a nice little dot. Looks much more like a coin. Ms. Pac-Man is going to have a much easier time carrying these around. 
than circles that are technically larger than her. All right. Uh, and our final character is going to be Pac-Man. Now, I've already got the styles filled out for Pac-Man. What I'm doing now is I'm adding another div that has the size and layout of a tile, but now is picking up the styles of the Pac-Man class. And here you can see that, as I started to explain earlier, in order to find that background image, we go up a directory, into the images folder, then we use the ms pacman.png image file. So I've got everything saved. Go back to the browser and reload, and there she is. Yay. Uh, I'm going to aim Ms. Pacman to the left. So in my code, I will just simply add the class left. Back in the browser, I reload. There she is. She's aimed at the coin. She's ready for it. She's going to take it. Well, soon, <laughs> soon. So taking a look at the code, the reason why uh, the left, the styles for the left class took effect and uh, basically instead of just the Pac-Man styles, in CSS, styles that are listed lower down in the code file are the ones that, um, if the browser is not sure, it's going to use the styles that are listed lower down. So this is the other part of the cascade. How to resolve conflict. That's conflicting information. I got a, a single div that has both the Pac-Man and the left class. The styles for the Pac-Man class and the left class both specify background images because the left class is listed further down the CSS file, that one wins. Okay, so those are all the styles, that's all the CSS that we actually need in order to draw a game board. Now we're going to jump over into the JavaScript. Things are going to be, um, if you haven't ever done uh, much programming, they're going to seem pretty foreign. That's totally okay. Um, if you get a little lost, you can uh, ask for a little more clarification, or you can always just experiment with the final code. Tweak some values. This is actually what I recommend most to people who are like, I, I don't really understand how that works. I can read it and kind of get it, but I, I don't feel like I get it completely. Uh, the only way to get, to gain mastery is just to become accustomed to working with code. So we're going to do that. All right. Uh, I'm going to get rid of the split, and we're going to jump into the JavaScript file now, where I have a number of things predefined. So the way that I've got this set up is that I've got my game data in, well, basically represented as a bunch of numbers, okay? Now, we're not really doing math here. This is me just finding a simple representation for all the walls, all the coins, and Ms. Pac-Man. So the translation for this is, take a look at this top row, it's all ones. And in fact, this first column all the way to the left, the last column all the way to the right, the bottom, those are all ones. As you might guess, those are the walls. I don't want Ms. Pac-Man to go beyond that, because that's beyond the game board. Now. I've got some twos strewn throughout. As you can see at the bottom of my text editor, those are coins. The empty ground is just the number three. And I've got this lonely little five right in the center. And that's where Ms. Pac-Man starts off the game. So this is my setup data. I've set up the game board. Um, and the reason why I've declared these, um, well, they're called constants. And th these are labels that I want to use to, ref to be able to have a human readable label for those numbers 1, 2, 3, and 5. So those are the first two parts. I've got my game data represented in numbers. Uh, I've got convenient labels so that I don't have to just read numbers all through the rest of my code. And then next, the next two pieces, I'm, I'm creating what's called a variable that's going to hold my game map, the, like 
the game map that is drawn to the screen. I'm going to declare a variable. I'm not going to assign anything to it. I don't, uh, I, I'm going to generate that a little bit further down in the code. And then this last bit of config configuration is my Pac-Man object. You can think of this like uh, uh, objects in JavaScript. If you've worked with other languages, JavaScript objects are a lot simpler. They're basically like labels and values. And that's kind of how we're going to use them. It's a great way to just keep track of a single concept. right? If you are a gamer, you might think of a game character as having like you know, strength and agility and certain values for those things. And maybe they've got some equipment that they carry. And you just need a way to list that out. That's what this object is. These, these are um, stats for the Pac-Man character. And she starts off at coordinate x coordinate 6 and y coordinate 4. Should we refer back to our game data? You can see that that's precisely where she is. Funny story though, uh, in JavaScript you start counting at zero. So that's so if you were to actually count one, two, three, four, five, you would end up at seven. But if you count zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six is the x coordinate, and then starting from the top, zero, one, two, three, four. All right. I'm using this feature in Visual Studio Code to fold up my definitions. What I want to show you is how, like, the overall organization of the code before I dive into um, the nitty gritty. I've got three functions that are, their only purpose is to create the game map. I've got a create, whoops, a create tiles function that's going to convert the game data into elements on the page. Now we call those DOM elements. Uh, that's an, another acronym. It stands for document object model. And that just means like when the browser needs to draw that rectangle, um, this is how it stores that information in memory, something called DOM elements. I've got another function that's going to, uh, it's basically going to take that game data, just all those numbers, and it's going to convert it, uh, it's going to use the create tiles function to convert it into DOM elements and then actually draw it to the screen. Finally, after each move, I need to erase the map so that I can redraw it. The next section of the JavaScript file are movement functions. This Pac-Man needs to be able to move up and down and left and right. Each of these functions is going to detect, all right, is she trying to run into a wall? Because if she is, then she can't, like, we're not going to do anything. On the other hand, if she didn't hit a wall, let's say wherever she used to be, let's turn that into empty ground. And then we're going to recalculate her new position on that grid of numbers, like where is her new position? And then we're going to say, all right, let's draw her in that new position. That's, that's all each of these four do. And they, they're very, very similar to one another. Lastly, this is our primary game setup uh, functionality. We're going to set up keyboard controls. We're going to make it so that as the user hits the arrow keys, it triggers these functions that make Ms. Pac-Man move. And then our main function kicks everything off. See, I'm defining a function and then calling it uh, just a few lines down. Um, here's a quick definition. If you are not sure what a function is, a function is kind of like a recipe. right? A recipe, like for turkey soup or for lasagna or whatever, it's a thing that you can use it over and over and over. It's a set of steps, and it has an outcome, hopefully a delicious outcome. I think that my functions have a delicious outcome. And we'll take a look at that now. So the main function, we'll start from the top here. Your main function does two things. It's going to draw the map, and it's going to set up the keyboard controls. Let's do this first. Let's, uh, 
Let's take a look at drawing the map. Here's the definition of drawing the map. We're going to ask the, the browser, can you create a div element for me? Just like we were typing uh, in the HTML document, right? This is how we do it using JavaScript. You don't have to put all of your, uh, your code in the HTML. And in fact, for a video game, you don't want to. You want to orchestrate that functionality using JavaScript. So the next thing that we do is we need to create the tiles using um, our create tiles function. And then, then we're going to eventually, once we've got all of our tiles, we're going to add that to the body. Now you might recognize this from the HTML document. There was a body tag. And this is the element that corresponds to that. And we're going to say, all right, I want you to append the map that we've created. OK. So let's do this. Uh, yeah. So, so the maps and every, every else will be in the body. Yes. Yeah. We, we create just a, an empty div element programmatically. We label it with a variable named map. Then we're going to do something with all those tiles. That hasn't been filled out yet. We are going to take those tiles, add it to the map, and then take the filled out map, add that to the body. So here's what that code looks like. Um, I know that I'm going to get a collection of tiles. I'm just going to go ahead and say that I'm just generating one tile for every bit of information in my game data. So I want to work my way through those. Here's how you do that in JavaScript. Knowing that when I call create tiles and I feed it the game data, it's going to give me a collection of stuff I can work through. Now I want to do something with each one of those tiles in the collection. So I'm going to say, all right, one at a time, one tile at a time in my collection of tiles. What do I want to do? I've, all I want to do is say, well, my map, I want, to, I want to add the tile to the map. So let's do that. So that's, that's kind of it, right? You'll do this a lot whether you're doing game programming or application programming for websites. You'll have collections of things. You'll have to work with each one of the things. Um, and for us, we're just saying, all right, we just want to add you to the screen. Or in this case, we add you to this temporary holding place called the map, and then eventually add the map. It's the whole map completely filled out to the body. So here's the trickier of the uh, functions. That's create tiles. All right, so uh, a little advice on creating functions. It's a really good idea at the very top of your function to create, declare some variable. It's going to hold some value. And then at the very end of the variable, I'm sorry, the end of the function, return that value. Somewhere in the middle, you're just going to do a lot of work with that, uh, with that variable. So knowing that this function is being given some ingredients, like a recipe, right? Uh, I'm putting the label on it, data. So that's coming in. And I'm going to say four. Let's work one row at a time. And now I need to work with each item in the row. So I'm going to say four, let's column of row. So with each one of these, each one of these is going to be a number. I want to convert that number into some sort of a DOM element. And as we saw from looking at the HTML, each of those DOM elements is going to be, well, it's going to be a div with the class tile and either the class wall or the class coin or the class Pac-Man. And if it is Pac-Man, then I might also add a direction class. So let's create a variable for the tile. And just like we did with drawing the map, we're going to create a div. So I'm going to say document.createElement give. And I know that each and every tile needs to have a class tile. So I'm going to 
call this function class list .add, and this is I'm just letting the browser do the work for me it created a, a div element for me so now it can also you know why not why don't you just add that tile class for me and here I want to know okay the number the specific number that I'm looking at in this row which I'm labeling call like column um, is that a wall perhaps if it is that's what this expression means so if the column is equal to wall column is a number and up at the top we said well wall is a number also so this is a much more readable way of saying if that column number is equal to one if so then let's say tile dot class list dot add wall all right well if that's not the case let's check to see if that column is a coin and I'm going to copy this line paste it here and just replace wall with coin because like we did in the HTML we need to make sure well if we want to show it as a coin it needs to have the coin class next it's not that is it perhaps should it be drawn as the ground hmm if so we'll give it the class ground and finally if we are actually drawing pac-man let's give it the class pac-man now remember we also have the ability to make pac-man sorry ms pac-man face a particular direction Remember that we're going to be storing that on the Pac-Man object as the direction. So if I want to access this value, which right now starts off as the uh, as right, I'm going to say Pac-Man dot direction. Pac-Man dot direction means right. I can update that later, and I will once I get into the uh, keyboard controls. So tile that class list dot add. Oh, no quotes, pacman.direction. So I can do that. This is one of the most wonderful things about writing code is you can just say, well, I saved that value somewhere else. I'm going to tell you where I saved it. You're now going to go look it up for me, JavaScript. And then JavaScript just does the right thing. Now that I've gotten this tile configured, I'm going to say, well, I want to add this one tile to the collection. So I'm going to say tiles array. Dot. Let's just push that on to my collection of tiles. Whoops, tile. All right. Um, and finally, if we've worked our way through an entire row, I do need to do this. I need to say, uh, let, let's call it a break tile. I want to introduce like a line break so that I start my next row of tiles. Uh, let's ask the browser to create an element, 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 break tag, and then we'll just add that to the array also. ER tile. Cool. And that's it. That's kind of it for working our way through that data. So to recap, we're going through one row at a time, then we're going through each item in the, uh, in the row of all these numbers, and we're converting those into div elements, and we're checking to see, well, what is the number? And based on that number, we give it particular classes. Okay, moment of truth, did that actually work? Hooray! Oh, wait, I should refresh. Oh, wait, sorry, sorry. I got my, my dummy data right here that I need to get rid of. Let's clear, let's clear that out. So I had to erase these, uh, these divs for those of you watching the stream. And then, back in the browser, yay, Ms. Pac-Man. Now, I'm hitting arrow keys and nothing's happening because I haven't set those up yet. So let's return to the JavaScript to fill out this next section. I'm going to fold up, create tiles, and draw a map. 
and here's what we're going to do. So here's setup keyboard controls. Now, when we call this function, it's going to do one thing. I know this is multiple lines, but it's going to do one thing. It says, hey, web page, when the user has the key down, I want you to run this whole other function. This is a little bit different from the other functions that we've defined. This is us saying, here's just a function expression. I want you to run this function expression. It doesn't have a name. I just want you to run it every time the user has the key, uh, any key on the keyboard, down. So I'm going to save that. And I'm going to return to the browser. Because what I want to do is I'm going to ask JavaScript to figure out what is, well, what key are they pressing? I can do that by saying, uh, I, want to, I want to log. I want to print out to the log the code, the numerical code associated with that key. So when I return to the browser, I can use this other panel called the console. And you can see that it's already listed out some things that I've, I've been pressing. So let's reload the page. I want to know what numerical code is the up arrow. It's a 38. The down arrow is 40. Left is 37. Right is 39. All right, there's no way I'm going to remember that order. So I'm down just left, right. down left, right. OK, OK, cool. Excellent. So I'm going to switch it back to the code. And what I want to do is I want to say if that key code, here I'm going to check, and I'm going to say if it's uh, 37, do one thing. Else, if it is 38, do something else. Do something different for 39, do something different for, for 40. All right. So what I could do is I could just hand, uh, call these handy dandy functions that I already know recalculate Ms. Pac-Man's new location. Ha uh ha. -huh. So let's see. Uh, move. What was it? Move. Le down, left yeah. Uh, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> you should check this. I should. I'm gonna check. I'm gonna check the web page. Hang on. Hang on. Thirty eight is up. Let's go with uh, left, right, up, up. Oh wow, that was weird. One moment. Left and right. Left is 37, and right is 39. Move right. All right, back to the browser. So this is, I mean, yeah, I could have memorized these. Like, maybe. Why would I do that? All right, up is 38, down is 40. All right, back to the code. Move up. And move down. Now, every time this Pac-Man moves, I want to erase the map and then redraw it. So this isn't really how real video games work. Like, they're much more sophisticated in that like, there's always lots of stuff happening. For our purposes, we're using this game to explore how web pages work. So it's fine. It's totally fine. Let's see if she moves now, or if there's like other stuff that I need to do. So she moves. Cool, right? I'm still logging out the keystrokes, but it's totally working. Yay. All right. So let's take a, a very brief look at the code for moving. It's way less interesting than, um, say, the keyboard, setting up the keyboard controls. But I'll take a uh, I'll show you what happens in, say, the move right function. When we move right, I update my Pac-Man object, and I say, she's moving to the right. And as you already saw, the, what, the way that I use this is to stamp the Pac-Man div with the additional class of right, which then changes the background image I'm using. That's getting pulled from the CSS. If I move her up, I set her direction to up. 
which sets, sets the up class on Ms. Pac-Man using the up background photo from the CSS. Now, all the rest of this stuff is just good old math. Now, this is how I say, well, is if I'm moving to the right, I'm going to look in the game data, um, like that giant list of numbers, and I'm going to look at her current Y coordinate and the X coordinate one space over. If it is not a wall, then let's do this. Let's say wherever she currently is, that is her Y and X location, turn that into just empty ground. Let's update her current lo her next location to be, we want to move her one over to the right. And then let us set that new location to be Pac-Man. That's where she is. So wherever she was, change that to the number for ground. Wherever she needs to be next, change that to the number for Pac-Man. All we're doing is as we move her, we're just manipulating numbers in our giant grid of, of numbers. That giant grid of numbers on every draw of the game map gets converted. Oops. Converted using these two functions. We create the tiles from the game data that we just updated because we just moved. Those numbers get converted into DOM elements using our create tiles function. One at a time, we add those tiles to the map, which is a fresh div element. And then once we've done that, we add the whole map to the body. And what that does is it creates this wonderful illusion. I mean, I think it's wonderful. This wonderful illusion of, yay, we're playing a game, right? Now, there's other stuff that could be added. I could add, um, I could add some animation. Like I could use animated GIFs for, um, for Ms. Pac-Man, I could use animated images for the coins so they kind of pulse. I could add a scoreboard. I could add levels by supplying different game maps, ones that are larger and more complex. So, yeah, um, and it's not a lot of code. Even with all of the comments that I've got in the final code, you, the JavaScript is maybe 200 lines of code. Um, you take out the comments, it's about half that much. The CSS, again, with a lot of comments, it's only about 80 lines of code. And as you saw, the HTML is next to nothing. It's, it's the barest skeleton of an HTML file whose only purpose is to load a style sheet and a file. All right, quick recap. Since this was intended to be uh, in tutorial format, you can go to the GitHub page that is uh, that will be posted to various places listed in uh, on the page. There are a number of questions for review, things that you should have picked up on um, as I was talking, if I was doing my job well, like how does the browser work with HTML? How does the browser draw stuff? What is what does CSS stand for? That sort of thing. Um, how do you make a web page interactive? What's a function? What's an event? I've got links to the starter code and the final code, so feel free, and I encourage you to please play around with the code, make it better, add more levels, do something cool with it. And I've got a few bits of review information about HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Finally, I was, I was using a, a few keyboard shortcuts for Visual Studio Code. And if you were interested in learning more, I've got a link to keyboard shortcuts listed on the Visual Studio Code website. And that is it. Um, <laughs> does anybody, uh, what questions have you got? Anything you, anything you want me to poke around at a little bit further, more explanation on any of the functions in the JavaScript or styles in the CSS? Yes? So what, is the, what is the difference between let and var? The difference between let and var. So uh, the short answer is let is better. 
uh, var is, um, var was the, so they're all variables, and you can use them basically the same way. I will tell you that let is going to be safer to use because var has some peculiar behavior. Um, if you try to declare a variable using var inside of, say, an if statement, it actually gets declared even if that part of the if statement doesn't get executed. Um, likewise with const, um, const is also a better var. The thing about const, you use const whenever you don't want the variable ever to be reassigned. If you ever try to assign to it again, like a second time, it's a constant. it is a constant. It's a constant, but only in one very specific way. You can never assign to it again. You can, if it's something like an array or an object, you can modify it, right? If it's an array, you can add more stuff to it, and that's valid because you're never reassigning, which is, it's people from other languages where const can't be like, you can't tweak values and you can't reassign, they get real upset when they encounter JavaScript const. Some other questions. What have you got? No? What do you what do you think of my Ms. Pac-Man artwork? Thumbs up. Yay. Oh. She looks very smart. I thought about putting glasses on her. <laughs> ne next version. Next version. Cool. Yeah. How would I do ghosts in JavaScript? I would have to redraw on a timer as opposed to only when I click a thing and I would have to set up. Um, there's, a, there's a special thing that is now built into browsers called uh, request animation frame. And I, can, I will add to the readme for my, for my code a link to like some good documentation on that because that's how you would actually make a clock tick at a regular pace as opposed to waiting for me to have to move Ms. Pac-Man. Um, but yeah, so that the ghosts move independently, you then might randomize their movement or make them smart where they try to get closer to where Ms. Pac-Man is. I would save that for like a much later level because I don't know, that sounds kind of, that sounds hard. <laughs> awesome. You want to close this up? Uh, yeah, I will let you hit the end button. So again, thanks for everybody online for joining us. Uh, we're Digital Crafts. We've got a couple of cohorts coming up in Houston and Atlanta in January and February, full and part time. Uh, so reach out uh, to hello at digitalcrafts.com or go to digitalcrafts.com for more info and we would be happy to make your acquaintance. Again, thanks for joining us.